This is going to be a short demonstration to show how you can collect ground points, ground control points, with the MLID Reach RS GPS. And you can use EasySurf software to increase the accuracy of those ground points. So essentially there are three ways to get very accurate ground control points. You can use RTK, uh, which requires uh, two GPSs, a rover and a base. And you can place the base at a known point. And then as you move the rover to record your ground control points, uh, they can talk to each other, usually wirelessly. And the rover can compute in real time accurate uh, position uh, because it knows both the base's correction data as well as its own GPS data. You can do RTK by tethering a single GPS to a network of GPSs known as a cores. Um, your GPS acts as a rover and the continuously operating reference service acts as uh, a base station. So you have to have an internet connection between your GPS and the cores network. And typically you might do this by tethering through your iPhone or maybe you have a MySpot, Hotspot, something like that. And the third way to do it is to use a single GPS, log its readings, including its raw data, and then apply the corrections later. So the benefits of post-processing kinematics i.e. when you do it when, when you collect with one GPS and you use that information along with some information you can download of the internet to correct later some of the benefits are you only have to have one GPS you don't need an internet connection at the site so for example you may uh, have to collect ground control points where there's not a good cell signal and it's less setup hassle it's better especially on-site, because on-site all you're doing is you're turning your GPS on, you're letting it uh, essentially stabilize for 10 minutes, and then you're walking around and when, you, when there's a point you want to record, uh, you use your control over the GPS to record that ground point. So the equipment I'm using, I have an Emily Reach RS GPS, and I have a GPS pole and sort of a tripod thing that sticks, up, sticks on the pole. I'm using my iPhone, iPhone to control the Reach RS. At home, I have an iMac running VMware Fusion, which lets me run Windows on my Mac. And I'm using EasySurf software uh, to post-process the data. So the reason I use this is to create ground control points so that when I use photogrammetry software, I can plug them in and both make sure that the photos align more precisely as well as the overall uh, product is better geo-referenced. So we're gonna do a short demo. I'm gonna use the manhole covers around my neighborhood to collect some ground control points. So you can see here's my setup. The MLED reach is on the top of that yellow pole. And right now it's standing centered over one of the manhole covers in my neighborhood. Note that there are trees all over the place, so I basically live in a forest, and the GPS signal is not great, so we'll see what the results are. Uh, before we get started, um, I enabled raw UBX logging on the Reach RS, and at each ground control point, so every time I go to a new manhole cover, I'll go to my iPhone, uh, and in the Reach RS application, as you see on the screen, I'll record a survey point, um, and I'll show you how we use that later uh, with the EasySurf software. So once we collected the ground control point locations with the Reach RS, we'll need to download the survey file. So on the Reach RS, when you are collecting points, those are part of a survey project, and you can download that. Uh, using uh, your Wi-Fi connection to the Reach RS. I'll typically download that and email it to myself. You also need to download the raw file that the Reach has been collecting. And this file is, it can be rather big. So sometimes I'll bring my GPS home before I do this. I'll connect it to my Wi-Fi network in my home and use a web browser on my Mac 
to download that. Okay, so let it, let's see what this looks like, how you do it. Okay, so this, here's how we use the EasyServe application. So the file here, demo, is a CSV file, and it contains the ground control point locations I collected using the Reach RS, the survey application that's built into the unit, and I exported those to a file called demo. This is the raw file, so the Reach was configured to log its raw data, uh, and this uh, six megabyte file was logged during my uh, time walking through the neighborhood. This is a utility that you download um, from the EasySurf folks and it allows you to essentially create some metadata that will help EasySurf identify where along the raw file log you collected the ground control points so it can correct specifically the ground control point locations. So we'll go ahead and run that utility. And for inputs, it takes the file that contains your ground control points, and again, that's demo. And it also takes as input the raw file. Um, and so we'll open the raw file. And what it does is it generates an XML file, and this XML file will allow EasyServe, again, to identify where along the path each of the ground control points was, and so it can differentiate those from the path itself. So all you have to do, here's the EasyServe application. I created a new project, so started blank. You go in the observations folder, and you just drag the XML file that you created with the utility in there, and it imports the raw data and the ground control point information. So those are imported. Now you can just run the process auto. Process auto will identify a cores network that is closest, or you can define which cores network you want it to use. And it's downloading data from that cores network that corresponds with the same time that you were collecting data with your GPS. And it uses that data to model the atmospheric distortion in the signal of your GPS and make the corrections. And this is happening in real time. I'm running this under Windows 10 uh, on a VMware Fusion VM on my Mac. Okay, so it's done processing those and it can give you some information about uh, the process. So we can see at the bottom here that the core network was uh, about three kilometers from the rover. Um, I collected about uh, 8,000, just under 8,000 um, samples. So the breach was continuously capturing the raw data. Now the ground control points that I created in the survey app on the reach, uh, there were a total of 12 of those. And this is telling me that it was able to get a fixed accurate location on nine and three is float. Again, I was in the trees and uh, so it was, it was challenging. To export the data, you go to export sites. Here are the, uh, the sites it's gonna export and whether they were fixed or float. I'll do that in a CSV format. Save those in file. Now, now I have a file that contains the uh, some header information and in the default sites file that I just created, this CSV file has the coordinates of the ground control points uh, that I collected. So uh, next we'll see how, how well those worked. So this is a Google Earth snapshot of two of the manhole covers in my neighborhood. And the red mark 
is the uncorrected position. And if you notice on the upper left hand corner, it's uh, about five feet away from the center of the manhole cover and it's displaced from that mostly south. And if you look at the right lower corner, the red is about three feet away from the center manhole cover and it's displaced north. So not only are the uncorrected positions wrong, but they vary differently. So they're not consistent. The little green dots are the corrected positions and they look to be about a foot uh, west of the location, um, but they're displaced the same. Now remember, I captured this stuff uh, in a wooded area and the application indicated that most of the points I collected were, were not fixed, uh, so they, they were a little less precise. However, it turns out that these points are displaced from the center of the manhole cover pretty much identically throughout the neighborhood. I'm not gonna pull up all the pictures, but it did a really good job. And in photogrammetry, you want two things. You want, uh, you want absolute accuracy, and that helps the total product be correctly georeferenced so that you can overlay one image on another or on, or on other features. But you, in addition to that, um, you can uh, have a little bit of uh, error in the absolute accuracy, but if the error is consistent, uh, those ground control points um, aid the photogrammetry software in stitching the photos together. So in this case, this is perfectly acceptable. Uh, it means that the overall uh, model of the neighborhoods, I've done this before, the neighborhood's about 20 or 30 acres, might be shifted a foot in absolute terms, and I can fix that, I can shift that uh, foot. But more importantly, these points are in the same place. And so uh, I know that the registration among the images will be correct. So that's pretty much all there is. Uh, it's easy to use. Hopefully this was helpful.